Welcome friends to lecture 1 of Pinoy Wise Woman's financial literacy course entitled Take Charge of Your Finances Now. My name is Maria, your trainer for today. If you are watching this, perhaps you already have some idea about Pinoy Wise or perhaps you are aspiring to teach this course. But just in case you have no idea who we are, we prepared a quick introduction just for you. What is Pinoy Wise Movement? Who are we? Let me tell you that by first telling you who we are not and then why we exist. We are not bankers, brokers, or opportunists, and most importantly, we are not con artists. In fact, we are not after your money. Well, you see, here is the problem. In 2009, there were 2 million overseas Filipino workers or OFWs in around 200 countries all over the world. We all know their story. Average Joes braved the seas in search of better employment and better wages for their families back home. They were certainly earning significantly more than those in the Philippines. In fact, they were earning so much that their remittances in 2009 accounted for 10% of the economy. For decades, their remittances became a safety net for economic recessions. This earned them the title of modern-day heroes. The question is, are these heroes really better off? Despite hardships, 47% of them have no savings. Many are unable to return home because of debts or pressing financial commitments. On the other hand, of those who were able to set some money aside, 1 out of 10 decided to start businesses that sadly only 3% succeeded. What about those back home? Statistics show that from the 8 million employed in 2009, 60% had no savings. Even worse, 10% lived beyond their means. And of those who saved, 80% of them put their money in the bank accounts, but the highest interest rate for savings is 0.4% and for time deposits, less than 2%. So they, they lost out to inflation rates that average at 5%. So what is our problem? Our hard-earned money is wasted. Now that it's clear, let me try to convince you further through a psychographic approach. Let's dig deeper by analyzing a typical Filipino's mindset. Based on Hofstede's cultural dimensions, the Philippines scored 19, just 19 in long-term orientation, as opposed to China, who scored the highest at a whopping 118. What does this mean? Long-term orientation stands for fostering virtues oriented towards the future rewards, as opposed to short-term values which focus on the past and the present. No wonder only 1 out of 10 Filipinos invest in the stock market, and no wonder a few of us save. Even more alarming is our score in the Power Distance Index, wherein we rank fourth. This isn't exactly good news. Power distance is the extent to which the less powerful members of the population accept and expect that power is distributed unequally. Scoring high is indicative that a majority of our population, our nation, has generally accepted that there is and always will be a huge gap between the rich and the poor. These are simply facts and figures. We know the story ourselves. For years, our country has been plagued with poverty and debt. Things need to change for the better, and it starts with us. And this is why we exist. The Noir Wise Movement exists to crush debt and poverty by changing mindsets. In 2010, Atika and Philcom Dev founded the Pinoy Wise Movement to convince Filipinos everywhere to save and to invest their hard-earned money. In fact, WISE, or W-I-S-E, stands for Worldwide Initiative for Investments, Savings, and Entrepreneurship. Today, we have over 300 trainers and counselors who come from various backgrounds, OFWs, teachers, public service employees, etc. In the Philippines, the movement was introduced to several major provinces. Globally, we reached out to Filipino communities in Italy, UAE, and now Qatar. Moreover, we also received overwhelming support from prominent corporations, financial institutions, government bodies, and small businesses. Together, we are united by a common mission, and we want you to be part of that mission. We want you to be wise in managing your finances and be wise in nurturing your families. We can do that 
through education, discipline, and counseling. In short, EBC. For more information on our founders, our member organizations, and the movement in general, we encourage you to visit our website, www.pinoywise.org. I hope that by now you are convinced of the importance of the financial literacy course for you, your family, and our nation. By the end of this course, we want you to be 100% convinced that saving is not an option. So let's start with the jackpot question. How is our money wasted? We discovered three root causes why our money is wasted and you need to be very aware of them. The number one reason why our money is wasted is through uncontrolled spending. And the number one cause of uncontrolled spending is, you got it, high liquidity. Sounds simple enough, but by keeping our money in savings accounts or worse, piggy banks, we generally spend knowing we still have money left to spare. Some, with credit cards or easy loan access, spend money they have not even earned yet. That is what is meant by living beyond our means. The second reason is having no clear goals or long-term plans. Imagine going shopping without a grocery list. Oh, the horror! You'd probably spend more time looking for things you don't need and forget all about the important stuff. In the end, you wasted a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of effort. Now, imagine shopping with a grocery list and a budget. You would finish faster and spend less because you already know where you need to go and what you have to do. You see, you may have goals or plans, but if you keep forgetting them, it won't do you any good. Remember, a short pencil is better than a long memory, so write them down. Finally, the most notorious culprit for uncontrolled spending is using money to make social statements. That's right. For one, OFWs and their families want to make a statement by associating themselves to brands of a certain standard. On a softer note, some OFWs spend beyond their income to make up for time spent away from their loved ones. This is called the splurge or one-day millionaire mentality. That is, they spend all their hard-earned money in exchange for happy memories with their families and friends. Unfortunately, in the end, many of them end up in debts and, well, have to work away from their families longer. Do these things ring a bell? Are they happening to you or to someone you know? Let's move on to the second root cause of uncontrolled spending. Let's see. Most Filipinos are trapped in the sandwiched generation mentality. Filipinos are known for being family-oriented, which has its advantages. However, this mentality created a negative impact on our finances. Picture a happy family. Mom and dad are working hard to raise up three kids. However, mom and dad need to send money to care for their parents, the previous generation, which is to an extent fine. Then their son grows up, but because he married too early, he needs a little help. That's the next generation. Basically, most of us are stuck spending for the past, the present, and the future generations. Oh, and don't forget about Uncle Bert, Auntie Nina, or Cousin Oscar, the nephews, the nieces, and so on. And so, in the end, the happy family suffers. Even worse, some cannot start their own family as saving becomes close to impossible. On a side note, this kind of mentality is also encouraging an unhealthy dependence attitude, or in other words, laziness. We really need to learn to say no. That's two root causes for you. Let's move on to the last reason, and that's making poor investment decisions. Here's a checklist. Like we mentioned earlier, bank savers lost out to high inflation rates in 2009. Meanwhile, a majority of those who decided to start businesses upon retirement fell victim to con artists or their businesses failed for lack of management experience, network, or simply funding. Well, we definitely did not start this course just to tell you all about the problems. But oh boy, sometimes to get cured, we need to first know how sick we are. So what can we do to stop wasting our resources? We need to start taking charge of our finances now. For starters, in order to invest or to save, you definitely need to spend less than your income. What a no-brainer! Oh, but Maria, you don't know where I'm coming from. It's impossible for me to set aside any money. Well, try this. 
just for one month, keep a strict record of your expenses, down to the cost of a cup of tea. I bet you'd be surprised just how much you spent on things you did not need or you could do less of. Hmm, maybe this will help. Define savings for me. That's easy, Maria. It's basically my income minus my expenses. Well, if that's how you've been trying to save all this time, the chances are you probably don't have a lot saved. Here's the difference between a wise man and a foolish man. A foolish man spends as much as he wants and saves what's left. Basically, he's saying income minus expenses equals savings. On the other hand, a wise man knows exactly what he wants in life. So he decides exactly how much he needs to save and spends his money wisely by keeping an exact budget. So income minus savings equals budget. Hmm. Here's a tip that could help. Write down lifetime goals which can be measured by cost and time. For example, buying a 40,000 real car at the end of the year. By having lifetime goals, you can determine how much you need to save to accomplish them. Now, even if you don't have clear future goals yet, as a principle, experts advise saving 20% of your income. Live off the 80% or less than that. Here's a third tip, creating passive income. Warren Buffet, the third richest man in the world who used to sell chewing gum when he was just a child, says, Never depend on a single income. Make an investment to create a second source. You see, there are two types of income. When we exchange our time and our efforts for money, we earn active income. Active income equals new work for money. We definitely want to increase our income, cut down on our expenses, and save more. So this is what passive income is for. Passive income is when we make our money work for us. So passive income equals money works for you. For example, keeping deposits or stocks that gain interest over time. Creating passive income actually, actually reinforces the importance of saving. In concluding, let me remind you what we've learned. Three on three on three. First, we learn three things. Number one, we really do have a problem. Number two, it involves money. And number three, the time to take charge is now. To do that, we learn three helpful tips. Number one, write down your lifetime goals. Write them down so you don't forget. Number two, save 20% of your income. Remember, even if you don't have clear future goals yet, start with 20%. Number three, think about creating passive income. Now, in ending, here are three things to ponder on. One, am I saving at least 20% each month? Number two, if not, why am I not saving enough? And finally, what can I do to save more? Save, save, save. Well, that's it for today. If you found this training helpful, then help us reach out to more Filipinos by simply liking us on Facebook. Feel free to send us comments, questions, or suggestions. We'd really love to hear from you. And don't forget to tune in to Lecture 2, where we'll discuss how to make smart lifetime goals. Till next time, remember, be wise.